welcome to everyone. We are live here on Voice Masters live stream. Very excited today to talk to you about the voice. The voice, these televised reality singer shows. And before we get started, while we're waiting for some other people to join us in the, the live Zoom meeting, I'm going to give you a peek at what I've been doing, why I've been so busy, why you haven't heard much from me for the last few weeks, but it's very exciting and I'm very excited to share some wisdom with you through my colleague and friend Adita Robert from Belgium. So while we're waiting, let's get rolling and let me give you a sneak peek of what I've been working on. Hi singers, it's me, Philippe. Guess where I am today? I am in Phoenix, Arizona at Real Men Studios where I'm filming my online course. Let me take you inside and show you around. Now let me show you what it looks like from my perspective while I'm filming. We got sound, camera one, two, three. And I'll introduce you to all the wonderful people I'm working with over the next few days. Have a great day. Hi everybody, it's me, Philippe. I just wanted to introduce you to my wonderful makeup artist, Dory Randall here in Phoenix, Arizona. And if you need a great makeup artist for film or commercial, she's the lady to go to. Thank you for your hard work this week. We've been filming for 32 hours, four eight hour days straight. And I can't believe how fresh I look thanks to this lady. Hi singers, it's me, Philippe working hard at finishing this epic online singing course. But I want to introduce you to some of the great people I'm working with here. And this is my sound technician. This is Alex. He is making sure that I'm on point and sound great. So I just want to ask Alex, you know, and surprise him here and say, how are you enjoying working on this shoot so far? It is very interesting. It's Truthfully. Yeah. yeah, it's unbelievable. In the beginning, you were talking about vibrations and frequency. I, I was able to imagine that and just the, the way that sound travels. It's fascinating. So do you think that there's some things that people could learn in this course? Oh my gosh. Um, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Alex. Hi, singers. It's me, Philippe. This is Ra. She is working on the production with me here in Phoenix, Arizona, and really taking care of us. Um, and she likes to sing as well. So is it fun for you to work on the set of uh, online singing course? Definitely. I'm learning way more than I thought that I would after reading the script and everything. It's been very informational. What was your favorite part so far? That I did not understand that you can change some lettering to make it sound better while you're singing for it instead of how it's actually written, you can sing it in a different way, and it'll be understood and more clear as singing. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. She's coming with me on tour. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Been working this week 32 hours in here, making the most comprehensive online singing course in history. Makai has been helping out and been running a teleprompter for me which has been a huge, huge benefit and blessing because there's so many things I want to say the right way for all of you guys. But let me ask you, how did you enjoy the shoot this week? I loved it. I learned so much. Like, I, I don't know anything about singing and now I do. What was your favorite part or anything that sticks out in your mind? I think my favorite part was the exercise demonstrations that you're doing. <laughs> I was actually doing them with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you didn't pay attention to me, but I was like massaging my throat and copying you, so it was kind of fun. So, do you think people have fun with this online course when we oh, release yeah. it? Yeah, because we had so much fun making it. I think they're going to love it. Hey, everybody, I'm here on the set of the four activities of singing. This is Anna, Anna Miller, my chief production editing officer. <laughs> the boss and I'm, I'm so grateful for her she's really put together a great crew we've been having a good time and i just wanted to introduce her to you she's going to run away before i ask her to say too many things 
But uh, what do you think, Anna? When when Philippe says it's the most comprehensive online singing course ever created, that's no joke. <laughs> we just spent four days in the studio, and my mind is blown. And this is this is the real deal. It's the real deal. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> Have a look around. Very cool, very cool studio here. It's me, Philippe. I'm on set here for the four activities of singing. Right behind me is cameraman number one. Camera one, that's David. How are you doing, David? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Great. What did you think about this huge, comprehensive singing course this week? Oh, it was incredible. Uh, I used to really be into singing, and I kind of lost touch with it. And this has inspired me to turn off the news radio and turn the music back on. So. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks so much. What was something that uh, kind of blew your mind that you learned this week? Uh, I would say I never considered my teeth in singing. And so when you started talking about the placement of your tongue relative to your teeth and kind of being familiar with the space inside my mouth in a completely new way, uh, that totally blew my mind. Cool, thanks David, and thanks for the great work. Honestly, uh, these guys are amazing. So if you need a good crew in Phoenix, Arizona, contact me. All right, I just wanted to give you really just a bit of a backstage view, you know, of what, what's been going on. It was, it was a lot of fun. I'm very excited for you to see this information and, and be able to use, use this information to help improve your singing and talking about singing. There are a lot of people that are big fans of The Voice, right? The show The Voice, we've got American Idol, we've got other, other televised shows and it's fun. It's fun to watch people sing, it's fun to root for them. It's, uh, people get very involved and uh, it's, it's so popular, right? And it's inspired a lot of people also to want to sing and to work on their singing. So I think it's I think it's very, very wonderful for singers and for for the singing business, for music. And it can be a great opportunity. But there are some also some things that we don't know. You know, we don't know, we don't see what's going on backstage. How do you get into a casting? How do these people even arrive there? And when they're working on this whole set and this production, what's it like for them? And I think it can be quite different than, than we imagine. And since one of my friends and colleagues has trained a lot of singers to, who have gone through this process and coached a lot of singers on The Voice, that I thought it would be very interesting for us to speak with Dita Robert from Belgium. She's joining us today from from uh, Denmark. So let me welcome all of you. We're going to welcome Dita here from tuning in from Denmark. And I want to welcome all of you joining in from around the world. Some of you, many of the names I recognize, but I know we have people here from Europe, from the United States, from Canada, from India, from many different countries, from South America. So welcome to everyone tuning in. We really want to share information that's going to make a difference for you in your singing and your lives. And without further ado, let me welcome in Adida. Hi, Adida. Hey. <laughs> Hello to all of you, live from Denmark this time. <laughs> yeah, hope you're all doing fine. <laughs> I like your applause, Philip. <laughs> Yeah, I've got I've yeah. got a fun effect that we can we can do, but um, in any in any case, I am a big fan, and it's so much fun to talk with you all the time. There you go. There's some. Ta -da. Applause. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, Dina. I have to say about Dina, uh, she's she's a very very dedicated uh, teacher and uh, a wonderful colleague. Also, one of the few people I would say that actually. Uh, actually, I think might have more energy than me. And <laughs> do you ever sleep, Dita? <laughs> what is that? What sleep? You know when you. <laughs> what is <cry>. sleep for? <laughs> well, I used to say that I can sleep when I get older, but getting older, I start sleeping a bit. But uh, it's boring. I mean, can do so much <laughs> more when I'm awake. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah. it's nice and thank you so much for having me here again and uh, to see you fresh I'm looking very much forward to uh, subscribing to your new program so that I can show it to some of my singers here so um Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it is dedicated you know, to spreading knowledge about singing around the world. That's really my passion. Having, you know, I'm I think you can relate. Just uh, let me know. You know you, you've been there. You've, you've done that. You've been a professional singer, a pop artist, a songwriter, and you've been always searching for knowledge. And that's kind of a journey I, I've, I've had, and I think you can relate to that. And as you go on, you're like, why did nobody tell me these things oh, yes. earlier on? It would have made all the difference or would have made my life so much easier. Can you yeah. relate to that? Oh, yes. But, I mean, I've been a, a singer my whole life. My mom uh, got me on stage when I was four. Uh, and then I worked my little own way there. I mean, my uh, main rule to get there was always say yes. So I said yes to everything and I started doing everything. So that would be jazz, rock, musicals, whatever people asked me to do, I would do. So um, I've always been working, but I've always been singing um I was a smoker as well, so I was singing and smoking, and um, I didn't know that a little pain, that that was not normal. I didn't know that getting tired vocally was not normal. I, I mean, all these things nobody told me, but it worked. So I know how to work with all these things, but ever since I uh, took more and more education, I took uh, certifications uh, to uh, know more and more, and once I started opening that door, it was just like, what? Man, I would have been a star even more then. <laughs> But now my, my, my passion is, I mean, I started working as a vocal coach with the whole plan to do this when I got a senior, when nobody else wanted to see me on stage. But then came Corona. <laughs> so I've not been singing for like one and a half year, like most of us. And uh, I've just been specializing more and more now. And uh, Luckily, I can work with my singers in Belgium and over and online. So I work a lot. I work even more than before. Um, and now my goal has just been to pass on all of this and, and to make sure that the singers today, that they know that every time something feels wrong, it's wrong. <laughs> so, so that's the main thing. And that's, that's become like a light motive. It's like I need... I need to help all these people. I need to, to, to make them better. And I just have kind of, just like you, we come from the same story. It's like when I see a singer, we just scan like zip, zip, uh, this, there's gold here, there's gold here, let's go here. Let's help them become a star. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, as, and um, there's, I mean, I see talents everywhere. I mean, there's, there's not one day when a new person comes in and you, you, they start singing and you're just like, wow. So uh, I started looking into TV shows. I did a lot of TV shows myself. And uh, I was very disappointed with how it worked backstage, um, which already uh, helped me take my uh, experience and give it already to the singers I work with. And then I was just like, okay, so now I know because I've been there in, in five uh, different TV shows. Now I've been there. I've been sending people there. I was like, why don't I just work to become an expert in how to put them in there? Because um, having people do a, a casting, like for a musical or for something else, that is totally different. There you need to be a super singer and you need to be in the criteria uh, for the role. So that's quite easy. But what we have to do here is to create singers that are going to fit into what the TV show wants, what the director of the TV show wants and what's going to make them make money. So it's another way. So that's also the things we're going to talk about today and um, questions if any of you have some. Yes, if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat. We're going to do our best to really try and answer all of your questions. And we're this is kind of a, a free format. So often on Voice Masters live stream, you're, you're used to getting a presentation with slideshows and getting some detailed information on certain techniques. But this is, we're going to just talk about it and we want to answer your questions as well. So one of the first things that people, this is, that's a lot of people 
probably 30 to 40 percent of the people that contact me about vocal coaching wanting to work on their voice they say i want to prepare for american idol or i want to prepare for the voice audition they've seen these shows they want to get involved they want to show their their talent and they have a lot of hope so how how does that work Dita? is is the voice or a casting show the way to get into the business and become famous <laughs> i just like to remove the word famous because famous is not a destination right so famous is is should be the reward of your work um and famous uh, uh, i don't like that word but but let's agree on that so what people want is what they see right they want to be in talk shows they want to be in medias they want to be on tv shows they want to be seen everywhere that that's what we call famous here i guess so the whole thing is when when these people come to you and talk i mean it's i really sit down and i say okay so what is the goal i mean do you do you want to do you want to play? What is your plan? Do, do you have a plan as a singer? Because I think it's really important to have a plan as a singer. So I would like to write an album. Okay, but what style of music? Because if you go with no taste or with no plan, then they're going to take over. And of course, you might get far because in TV shows, the more manipulative you are, um, the, the further you can actually get. But... I'd like to help the singers stay a little bit themselves as well. And uh, thereby, what, what we do is we work the other way around. We work like, okay, so this is what a TV show wants. Now, how can we make you fit into those boxes? I think it's better because that way we actually help them plan. But I think the most important thing uh, to do when singers come and talk to you like this is to actually tell them that it's a, it's, it's a game. Because... The, the reason I send people and I say yes to, to putting people when I feel they're ready there, and I say when I feel they're ready, because otherwise I let them go and subscribe themselves. But if they want my mentorship, and then we go hand in hand, and that, that we take these competitions together, then we need to have a plan together. Because it's very hard to go alone. Of course you can, but the more you are, the more people you have standing behind you. The, the easier it is for you to, to get through. So the first thing is to tell them it's a game. So it's not about, I mean, if you come for justice, <laughs> this is not the right place. So warn about how it works, give them the rules and the game plan. And then once we're in, then we can work on. But it's very important that they know that it's a game and that it's a game where the TV show wants to earn money, right? That, that That's the thing. So... First thing is just to say that no matter what happens, when you're on TV, just one time, one TV show, you have already got a huge publicity you cannot even pay yourself. So it is a huge publicity, right? And today, I mean, when I were in TV shows, a little longer ago, <laughs> there, were, there were no social medias. So the only thing you would get, if you were lucky, was an article in a, in a magazine or an interview in a... In a, in a in a journal so that's about what you could get you could get an interview on the radio but all of this was very complicated they needed to phone you and get the phone number from the production but today while you're on tv they're they're writing down and writing to you on facebook on instagram on all these medias yeah. and that was actually uh, this year i had uh, four participants in the voice belgium uh, where uh, three of them were people that I was mentoring. And um, I did not know how horrible people can be writing on the social medias. Mm -hmm. So that is something I really prepare them for now too. And I have actually for this uh, TV show, I have, I have a little crew who goes out and answers to all of these bad, uh, bad comments uh, in a very marketing good way because uh, it's very important for me that that my singers feel safe when they work with me. So, uh, but but that's a new game that that game I, I hadn't seen coming. So um, that's really amazing as well. Of course, when I say bad, I mean we had three or four bad comments within two thousand fantastic people going woo woo woo. But it's just important yeah. that the singers that knows that this is coming too. Yeah, I totally agree. I think preparation. Of course, one of the first things I ask singers when they come to me or contact me, they say, 
I say, what, what do you want to do? What's your goal? What's your goal with singing? And then, then we can develop a plan. If their plan is to be, to go to a casting show or audition for a university program or, or, uh, find a, a record contract, a production contract, you know, yeah, it's another the, plan. the goal is, is important. And it, yeah. it's uh, important that you know what you want or you, what you are goal is what your plan is and then you got to look at okay where are you now right what are the steps we need to take so identifying those steps are really important and i think that's absolutely true um nowadays it is so fast on social media and it's wonderful people love to get comments but but uh especially we've you know if, if you've seen the social dilemma that that movie they produce it's a great great movie on understanding how the algorithms work how oh. how this impacts like uh, a lot of people's psychological health especially younger generations if you you do need to have you do need to deconnect and be prepared that as soon as you are getting a lot of exposure you know you're not gonna you're not gonna make everybody happy and there's some people that are just just have fun being mean you know and, literally yeah. that word malicious in english it exists for a reason <laughs> some people just want to be mean and yeah. i don't understand that but you gotta know you can't you cannot measure your self-worth and your singing ability and what you want to do by other people's opinion obviously yeah. you know you need to trust um certain authorities and and decide who you're going to trust and believe you know that's important but that's that's very interesting like you said i mean most of the most of the contestants on the voice nowadays or american idol you know they have no idea what it was like before social media oh no <laughs> it's, it's terrible i mean it's another world out there now it's like people can really get into you they can really contact you when you're in your bed on your phone or write to you i mean it's it's amazing i i i love the i'm also a marketer so i love the deal in the marketing business but i must say wow it, I, i didn't expect that to go so fast i mean it's while the person is singing people are writing it's like blah, 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 blah. Yeah. so um so that's just one of the things and um, that that we have to remember uh, telling people about Well, tell then, us, uh, tell us a little bit about, so if you watch the show, right, let's just yeah. say you've been watching one of these shows, you basically have the impression that you sign up for an audition and you go and sing and all of the auditions are on tape and they're going to, you're maybe going to get on there. So is, is that, we know if you just calculate the thousands and thousands and thousands of people that audition, there's no way they can show every audition. So. So what what are they looking for? What helps these programs? What helps their ratings? What helps them make money? What are they looking for? <laughs> let's look for let's look for two examples. Yeah. So let's That's say on the one side there's the pure entertainment factor and on the yeah. other side you've got a talent. They're looking for talent. Um what's what factors are they trying how are they trying to combine these? Yeah, so to, the, the most important thing you need to know is that when you sit and you watch this TV show, you go, wow. And you're also going to notice very often that in the public, publicities and in the teasers before, that there are some faces that you're already going to recognize. So everything is mounted afterwards and put up a way that you are already going to like the coming up singer. So subconsciously, you're already aware yourself of who is winning. So this is just super magical uh, TV mounting thing. But if we take it back, if we sit down and we say like, okay, so what does the TV show want? What do the singing TV show want? So very often, I mean, what they want is to make money. That's, that's the plan, right? They want to make money. They want to be seen. Now with the social media, there's a new plan. And the new plan is to make a buzz. So What makes a buzz? What makes a buzz is when you and I, uh, Mrs. and Mrs. Everybody sitting behind the TV show, when they like someone, they go on Facebook and they share that with their friend who sends it to another friend. Who sends, I mean, we all know how a buzz works, right? So we want to create it. They want this buzz because the more likes and the more uh, people uh, communicating, if positively and negatively, it's all publicity, right? The more the buzz, the better. So that means, so if, if now we go back and we look at the TV show and we're like, okay, 
So if they want to create a buzz, what do they need to create a buzz? So we go the other way around. So to create a buzz, there are many solutions. One would be that I sit and watch the TV show and I get really, really touched by the story of the singer, even before the singer sings. I mean, you know, I'm here in Denmark and my granddad is dying, so maybe I should sing a song for him. And it's even the truth, but I mean, this is the story, right? So if you look at all these TV shows, there are always a little story before the singer comes on stage. And that is one of the keys for the singer. Write your story. Yes. Before even opening your mouth, write a story. Because if you can, you can do. You can touch people. You can provoke. You can make them sad. You can be a political option. You can come with anything you want. So they want people with a story. And if, it, if you don't have one, they're going to make one. So it's much easier that you make it yourself. So, yeah. and this is in the States and in the UK, it's like really, 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 really important. The story, the story. But the thing is, <laughs> you can't be an actor. They need to go and dig for something in your life. So what I do with singers is I prepare the stories. We prepare three or four of, of things they have been through because luckily as we work together they share a bit of their life I share a bit of mine and maybe we cry together and we figure out this is a good story but that's too hard to tell so what story so see I'm, I'm really sorry if we have singers out there I think we have guys go for your dreams go and do the TV shows I'm just gonna show you how to be smart okay so to, to get through you need to be smart super singer and you got to uh, find the place where you let people manipulate you so we're gonna work on this and i'm gonna show you some keys how to do this this is the first key make a buzz how do we make a buzz we need a good story so that has to be a song for a friend who died a song for a family member it can be a political opinion it can be racism it can i mean anything that touches us that's going to touch people out there sells okay so that's like key one so the second thing they need of course they need a fantastic voice but most people out there don't know how many fantastic voices there are because <laughs> right now if i choose just with i work with about six seven hundred people for the moment if i if i look at these people and i go like how many could win a tv show i could at least give you 40. you know i mean everyone sings so fantastically because people start to dare now so it's just amazing. Of course, then they don't have the they don't have the the, the attitude. They don't have uh, all the keys. But we're gonna give them all the keys. But the voices yeah. are there. So afterwards, oh, that's, that's yeah. So, it's so important to say that. I mean, I've been you've been in the business for decades. I've been in the business for decades, and there are there. It's a, it's scary how many talented people there are. But this is, I think, a very important point to make. I, I've been at a lot of auditions for musicals and opera and concerts and recording things. And I just, I, one, one memory sticks out in my mind, and maybe I've shared this with, with some of you before, but I was waiting in the wings backstage to go onto the stage of a huge opera house and sing for, you know, the artistic directors. It's like basically the casting people, like just like these shows. I was waiting and I heard this guy singing it was an opera audition and he sang it was the most amazing scene i've ever heard i mean live it was up on the level of of Pavarotti and you know oh. the greats it was just amazing I'm like oh my gosh i was waiting for this guy to come out so i could see who is this guy and oh, I, I I, i'm gonna do i'm gonna do what i saw for you okay this is how the guy came out I was like, there's no way they can put him on stage, right? So it's one thing to have an amazing talent, but it's another thing to place yourself in a position where you're, you're actually usable, right? Mm -hmm. And that I just knew for, for this, is, for, that guy was off the charts amazing, but there's no way you could cast him on in a stage production in a show production because it's just not this wasn't going to work so uh, the story that's also the first thing um i talk to people about is say they they need a story 
They need a story. So this is really important about how to place yourself so that they can use you. So they can say, okay, we can use that. We can sell that. People are going to relate to that. And the message that I like to say is, this is what is unique about you, right? This is your best, most valuable capital is your individuality. What has happened to you in your life? What makes you see the world differently? What have you, have you had to overcome? That's you and nobody, nobody yeah. can, can compete with you because that's authentic and it's real, but it's so important to go through this process. So I just wanted to share that and and let you keep rolling. Yeah, but I can actually, I can actually just use your little example to say the opposite thing. So your example was, I, I just wrote relate because that's really the word. Uh, I got this in an Ellen show, and the word relate is just relate. the yes. word. Um, sorry about that. So what you say is, as you said, this guy was fantastic, but uh, image there was too much to work with, right? Uh, but we also have the opposite. We can also have this fantastic fantastic singer that's even better than Whitney Houston or can compete with Beyonce and she comes out of stage and she looks perfect she looks even better she's probably younger and has better legs and she can dance and jungle while she sings and she can play the saxophone with her, her back hand whatever you know she has everything a hundred percent winner but they don't want that in the TV shows either because they cannot manipulate her, they cannot dress her up because she knows what she wants, they cannot make her better because then they have to make her worse first to make her better because I mean this is all the part, the, the things we're talking about is all the things we got to go through so in the TV show what, what the TV show wants is to make you better they want to show that you have a like the little neighbor kid coming in here hi you sing well come that's how it has to seem for the people looking. He comes in, he sings, Badam! he has a fantastic story, and he cries, and he's uh, sad, and then, pow, everyone cries. They film close up to people sitting there crying too. Ha, we got a bus, yes! So the next time this little boy is on stage, he's going to be looked his hair is like, woo, he's not crying anymore, and he's going to stand there and just be fantastic. And this is where the first thing people are going to do, are going to say, oh my God, the judges on The Voice, they just changed his life. They make this challenge so fantastic. I mean, the only thing he does is he learned to look into a camera, which gave him more confidence, and maybe he worked a lot at home, but... I tell you, once they're on the TV show, they get to see the judges like three times for 15 minutes. That's all. But let's not go there now. But that's a, there, there's a whole downside. But I must, and, and, and the upside is the, the free publicity. Yeah. I mean, some of the singers I, I, I've worked with, they, they, all these ones got really far this year. But from some of the other years, I mean, they're doing a TV show now. Uh, they're actors. Uh, another one is a Doppler for, uh, for voicing. So... There are lots of careers out there, and and on on the net is is the place now to be. And so um, so yes, the the thing is, if you're too perfect, it's the same problem. So yeah. you need to be a little. I mean, if this guy you're talking about, if he was on a TV show, then he could have won, yeah. because you're just saying he walked out a little bit weird. And yeah. so what they could have done, they could have dressed him up and make him better, because then he had something they could work with, right? They need, they need you guys to sit at home uh, and, and go, wow, look, this is fantastic. They're making him better and better. So if the second key is like, so if the first is the story, the second one is be the best of yourself, but tune it down. Tune it down so only your voice is good or your character because they want to be able to build up. So if right. you're 100% straight away, it, it'll be easier for you to to sound fantastic and go in some old clothing so that they can make you look better next time. Mm -hmm. It would be easier for you to uh, sound fantastic and not to be very nice. Or I mean, they need to have somewhere where it's crispy where they can go in and work. And all of this can be planned. It, it and that's that's what I work. It, it, it sounds like a bit like I'm someone making people fake, but that's not the idea. The idea is to give people the opportunity to stay as long and not only let the TV shows play with them, but also make sure that 
the singers play with the TV show because they yeah. call it a game, but it's not fair to have a game where you only have people you move around. So I think it would be fair that we play both sides, right? So yeah, it's just being it's just being smart, right? It's just yeah. understanding what what they like you said. If if the casting show just brings in all the perfect, amazing people and puts them on stage, it's it's much it's impressive, but it's less yeah. impressive, less interesting than the, somebody that can go on a journey because yeah. that's what we want to watch. That's what gives us hope. That's what gives us hope we can get there as an audience. You know, say, look, this person had to overcome all these things and and this is the platform for them to make this journey and reach their yeah. dreams and change their lives. And that's ultimately what, what we want to see. That's what we all want to dream about, right? Yeah. We all want to dream about someone helping us live our dreams. Right. And, and that's what these talent shows they do really offer that we we do agree they do offer that but to one person and that one person i tell you what that person has been through before he gets to winning it, it it's a, it's a big journey well let's and, do that let's go through yeah. that process so let's say yeah. you go to you we do all the planning we create we look at the story that's going to be interesting for the it's, it's a show right somebody's writing the scripts and story that they can write on and improve on and take their their talent on a journey and and raise them up so let's say we we get that far um what's the first step they contact you what where does it go from there in the preliminary well, generally, generally um the thing is generally you start by sending a video right so let's say the singer is ready he sends a video or um or a podcast or uh, he sometimes there are some radio shows also casting uh, singers over the radio so it depends a little bit. I, I know in the States, I think it's state by state or town by town. Here in Europe, you have like, depending on how big the country is, you have in the main towns and then it ends up in one town. So um, so you send you send all your videos out and then they already precast. They, they start selecting within the videos and they're going to, they're going to take it down here. They would take it. I mean, this is going to be so small amounts compared to you, but we would go from 5,000 down to, I'd say 700, 900. So they already <laughs> throw a lot of people away. And this is where we already got to be smart because we got to sit down and also tell the singer, how is this planned? Because they're not just going to go and say, oh, let's, let's find talents. Da, da, da. No, yeah. they already have a plan again. So what they want is they have what they call precast people. Precast people are people who don't have to send the videos. So you have a little detective team working for these TV shows, filling up 20% of the spots. So they're going to fill up 20%. So they're going to call out people like Philip Hall and say, you got a lot of followers on Instagram, dear. Uh, I know you don't need it, but would you like to be part of this TV show? Because it'll give you a lot of exposure and then you can sell your single right after, right? And you go, Ugh. okay, do you want to pay for it? <laughs> you know, it can go very fast. It can, some people can actually get paid when they're precast. Other people, they get a lot of exposure. I mean, they have a precasting contract or they just get in. So these people, they're selected already to be in the show. So we have 20% 20, 20 who are already there. And these people are people with huge followers, with Instagram pages. They are going to be, you're going to have some models, some people from, uh, I don't know if you have all these, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, Angels of the TV, uh, My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, uh, Wedding Masters, whatever, <laughs> you know, Baking Masters. If we can find some from other TV shows that they can precast, they will. So that means we have, that's a 20%. Bam. Okay. And then we have 20 other percent that they're going to decide on. Then they're going to sit down. This is going to be like 40%. They're going to sit down and then they're going to go like, hmm. Okay, so we're going to need a tall guy. We're going to need a funny guy. We're going to need uh, someone who cries a little bit. We're going to need uh, different nationalities, different colors. We're going to need uh, a really old one, very young one. <laughs> so they have a plan right so they're gonna start filling out with the people they're gonna start filling out this plan so they're gonna already start categorizing into the plans so if they if they want young singers then they're already gonna within these 5,000 people they're gonna go, okay young singers young singers 
And then you have a whole table where you have, you take care of the young singers, right? Find me, a, uh, find me five. You over there? Uh-huh. Gospel singers? Oh, yeah. Give me ten. Uh, you over there? I want eight blondes. Uh, oh, seniors. Can, you take seniors? Five seniors over here coming up, right? <laughs> so they're going to they're gonna sit and then they're going to start each of them to cast their category. And then you have the last percentage where that is just Mr. and Mrs. Everybody. And Mr. and Mrs. Everybody, there is a space for you out there. But this space is a little bit limited. So you have less than 50%. I would say 40% Mrs. and Mrs. Everybody. And there... We have just to be in, so we just have to put all the cards on our side. We just have to make sure that you are in shape, that you're ready, that you know around 200, 300 songs, that you know songs. I mean, in, in the States, I guess it's a bit easier because you sing in English, right? But, for example, if you're in Belgium or France or Canada, you have to be able to sing a lot of songs in French, have a good culture, because French singers like old French songs, which are not very funny, and some of them are gorgeous, but, I mean, it, it, all, the, all, the, all the young people want to sing the new songs, right? They want to sing all the American songs. So, so in all these countries, we have to have songs for at least two languages and the music culture for at least two languages. Then comes the plus. If you play an instrument, yeah, it's a bit like college edition here. <laughs> if you have a culture... Yeah, and then comes a very, very important part, which is the likability. But this is not on yet because they haven't met you yet. They're just choosing already on the videos. Then they're going to send out, let's say they choose their 700 people, then they, they select, and then they're going to invite you into castings. And there you come in, and this is not on TV. We're not on TV yet, huh? So all of this is done off TV. And then they're going to sit down and they're going to, select they're gonna have you sing you normally you sing two songs two songs you have chosen yourself they're gonna have you sing these two songs and then you go into an interview so it goes quite fast a little bit merci thank you oh next they do that all day and again within within the the boxes we've created before with age uh, color music style uh, uh, the people are just gonna put him into there and say okay so now i have them he can sit and watch the videos, and this person is taking care of that category. So, once you get the new call, and you're furthermore in, then you're going to choose, in, in a lot of these shows, it depends a bit. On the, on the, on the US or Britain's Got Talent, it's not the same, because they, they want your talent. So, you're gonna, you can come with the songs you want. They're going to already suggest a bit. But if you want the other TV shows like Idol or, or The Voice or X Factor, in these TV shows, what they're going to do then is they're going to sit down and then they're going to go like, okay, they're going to give you a list around 200 songs and uh, 20 uh, mandatory songs. So within these 200 songs and 20 mandatory, you have to choose two songs in their list, two in the mandatory list, and then you can add two of your own choice, which means you have to suggest six songs. And this is getting hard because if you are, uh, I don't know, an opera singer, I, I tell you there's maybe just one opera song in there. So it's, it's already... Yeah, 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 yeah. So then you come with all these songs, you send them the song list, and in that they're going to choose two songs out of the six songs. Of course, they're going to try as much as possible to choose songs within their mandatory list and songs within, except if they really loved you singing an opera song. So that extra one negative. So then you come with these two songs, you go to a new casting, and in that casting you have the interview again, and you're going to sing the two songs. They're going to go, ah, na, 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 na. then they're going to go like, mm, I think you like better this one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you wait a little bit. Here comes the third one, or fourth, or depends on how you calculate, the third one. And there you come back, and here you're meeting the musicians. So the musicians are going to have you try the two songs, but generally, they have already preferred one which, on which they have made a fantastic arrangement. And the other one, they're just going, ning, 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 ning. So, <laughs> so once you're there, you're really happy because it, it's a happy and you, you have a lot of attention. And, and, and uh, I mean, I don't want to sound critic. It's just, we, we need to know that it's a game. And it is a game, yeah. right? Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's fair. I mean, yeah. I think that's what people, what, what we want to communicate. First of all, 
is this a wonderful platform to for to get yourself promoted as an artist yes by far possibly the very best but you also have to consider it's it's part of it's part of the entertainment business yeah. and in the entertainment business you know it's it's not that you walk in and sing once and everybody just puts you up you know up on the throne or puts you out there it's that you have to go through a process and it's the same thing so it may seem like discouraging or or difficult it's just phases it's just phases if you're aware of that you know then you can have realistic expectations you know and then you and know that you know you you can you can try this multiple times right but you just it's basically an audition a casting process if you're going to go audition for a film a theater piece anything Great. else you're going to go through similar steps but this this is uh, important to know and that's why i think it's uh, it's interesting to know okay when when does it get let's say when is the exciting serious point happen because initially it's like sorting 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 prepare yeah. your story be prepared you got to choose their songs you know you get you get through let's say you get through those first three rounds is that the point where you can be like hey now i'm going to be on tv <laughs> the, the thing is actually yes uh one, once you have this this fourth one i'm talking about we meet the band you're supposed to choose one of the two songs right but they they generally choose it for you. Yeah, they have their so, favorite one, you know. Yeah, so while while they walk you to the studio where you're going to rehearse, they have this manipulation process that I already tell a lot of people about where they're like, oh, but this would really be much better for you. This will give you a better chance to win. And I mean, you really got to be tough and, 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 and protect yourself in there because it, it is hard. It is hard. But then you get through, let's say, you get the, the final call, bam, you're in. Then comes another uh, moment because you have to go, all, everyone goes back, meet each other, and then you have to sign the contract. So there's a whole conference about what the contract's about. People can ask questions. They're going to get it. So there we're down to, uh, what did I say, 250 or something like this <clears throat> that, that are in. Once they're in, then we're going to start having, uh, for the voice program, it would be the blinds. If we're in X Factor, it would be the other shows. If we're in Idol, it's the first shows that you see where they walk in. Uh, and then, then starts the, the show where you're on TV. So here you're on TV. And once you're in there, the, the, one of the, the new keys here is your likability which means are people going to like you? I don't know if you use these words in the States, but we use it a lot in the yeah. UK and Europe. So this is like a measure we have of how likable are you? Are people, are, are people out there, is the mom and the grandma and the kids, are they going to like you? Are they going to go like, oh, she's so cute or na na na. So we have the story, the likability. You've already been chosen for your voice or because luckily you fit into a category that was empty or <laughs> whatever, you're in, right? But then the thing is, once you're in, you're like, ooh, I'm in. But that's where it actually continues. And it's every time, every time it's a game. So every time, I mean, I don't know how the, I think the work, the voice works, the same thing uh, there is here. Once you're in, then in the beginning, you're just selected like click clock. But no, they have, they can choose so many, each judge can choose. And we have these hearing bots um, where you also have people from the production telling you what they really want. Up there is sitting precasters who are there, who's already seen your videos, who's been part of the team of categorizing, and they know what they want you to vote for, what you don't want to vote for. So uh, very often you can see they have a little paper with, with written the name of the TV, if I don't say it, right here. And they already have the pictures and the names and the songs. So they know a little bit about the candidate once they have these papers. And then they have a little help here saying, nah, don't turn yet, don't turn yet, we need to create a suspense. Get it, get it, get it. So everything is, is pretty planned. Once you're through this first blind, let's say you're taken, let's say you're in, let's say you go to the further shows. Once you're in, then what happens? Then you have a lot of exposure, you have medias calling you, you have TV, you have all these uh, online interviews, uh, people liking, not liking, talking, exposing, answering questions. So you're actually talking more than you're singing in these shows, huh? <laughs> this, is, this is where it's quite funny. 
So the show uh, in the beginning it it's it's very long because there are lots of of, uh, of pre selections, and then we end down at ninety, then we end down at forty eight, and once we start, uh, then we have these battles where you have two people singing once again each other. So that means we're cutting everything down by fifty, right? So we're cutting down half, and that that's where you you just sang once on TV which you were manipulated to choose, but you're probably happy with it any way you're trained, you got in. The second one is a battle. The battle, you don't choose your song. So there, if you get a, if you get a crap song that is not putting you in an advantage, then you really got to have someone to work with. Because if you stand there alone, you're already like, yeah, but I'm finally through and I have to sing a whatever crappy song. Yeah. And, and, and that's where the game starts, because you know that, that's where it's tough. And then, um, small secret, once we are here, we have, uh, I'm not giving any names out, we have a, a record company, uh, and we have a, a guy from the record company already sitting there and pre-planning which five people he should start writing songs for. So he will sit there and pre-plan what, what, what people to write songs for. We don't know if it's a winner yet, right? But we're going to start writing some songs for the potential five finalists, or four or five. So we get through here, you're happy, you're singing, you get through the battles, then you're in the game. But then you're in a live show. And in the live show, it's cut down again by half every show. And, and the thing is, you never really get to do what you want, because you're against the people from your, of your own coach. So what would have been fantastic here would have been if the public voted, and that everyone was against everyone. But that's not the game. Here it's actually a game of the coach. So you're against the four or eight people in your team. So yep. when you choose the coach, it's also about think. Because the day you're in the casting, you have already seen who's in there. You have seen you have seen the, 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 the 40 people who's in your TV show. So it's about like, okay, who chose what coach? If there's a singer you're afraid of, then choose another coach. Because you're going to be against that person, right? So it's really, it's really tough. It's, it's really tough and, and, and it's difficult to plan. It's just about, I mean, they just, they just, the singers just need to have uh, the head on the shoulders and uh, know a lot of songs and be strong and, 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 and play the game. It's like Stratego, huh? <laughs> I don't know if you know that game. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, I think, I think this is, it is just helpful, you know, helping people to understand the backstage process, you know, yeah. and, and it maybe maybe it takes away a little bit of the magic for some people, but you have to realize this is the entertainment industry. You are producing a TV show, they are producing a film, and it's always, always set up. It has to follow a script, it has to go. Now that doesn't mean that um, that it's it's not worth it or it's not fun. It's just this is it helps to know what to expect. If you get cast in a film, you know, you're going to go through a lot of the similar yeah. similar steps yeah. until you get the final casting. And then you're on set and then you have to deal with the same things. You have to be prepared. You have to be flexible. You've got to work with a lot of people. You got to follow directions from the director. You know, it's it's not just about you doing your thing. It's like no. you doing you doing somebody else's thing as best as possible. That's what an actor's, you know, in the beginning, yeah. at least for quite so many years, that's what the expectation is. And you know that. So your jobs come in there and deliver, right? Deliver the best possible um, yeah. performance you can with the material you're given. So it's, it's just, uh, I think it helps people to be a little bit more realistic because let's be honest, what is Hollywood? Hollywood sells the dream. Yeah, it's, it's right. been, you know, we're selling a dream. We're getting people <clears throat> dreaming. And if you want to come to Hollywood, this can be abused very easily. But the people make a lot of money selling the dream. Right. And that can happen in lots of different lines of, of business. So the more you know about how this works, then the more chances you have of staying calm, knowing what to expect, preparing yourself well. Um, and I think it's very interesting, like you said, it's you don't always get to choose your songs you know does that is that ever come back does that ever come back at some point in the process like the final rounds you get to choose 
or is it always, hey, let's talk about these the songs? Does the director and the yeah. or directors come and say, we, we think you'd be great with these songs. We would like you to sing uh, this song. Is it always that specific or do they say, what about no, these it, three songs? Yeah, well, the thing is, I mean, for the for the first live show this, this year, we really had a hard time because the, the producer was really, really, uh, really, really, really picky. So I think we suggested uh, for for uh, each singer. I think we suggested like forty, fifty songs, and every time it was no, and they came back crying and then and really having a hard time because they were like, "I'm not understood here. What do I do?" And the more they say no, at the end they give up and just say yes to a song, and which, which happens and which happened, which of course uh, in the beginning works because I'm like, okay. Why did you choose that song? But let's make it good. So so we go in and then we make it fantastic. And, and that's the whole idea. Um, and luckily, I mean, if you're alone and, and you choose the wrong song, I mean, you have to know that when the production wants you to go, then that's when they're going to start putting on the pressure. When they start being less nice and they start maybe wanting you to wear some really funny clothes because you, there's a lot of re-looking in there too. And you probably end up wearing a huge gold crown uh, with a hookah hookah dances around you if you're not careful. So it's really about saying no, but also learn to say no. Say, say no in a real way so that they're not going to say, oh, this guy is difficult to work with. So uh, it's really a balance. Of course, you can get through and there are lots of stars and people who went through and who were just lucky the whole way. Maybe your personality fits through all of this and you don't even have to think about all the things we're saying. But if it doesn't, if you want to plan right, then you have to know the game and you have to and say, I want to be a participant in the game and not being the one played around with. So this is really important. But, I mean, we can just imagine one thing. I don't know if you guys have seen Susan Boyle. Do you know Susan Boyle? Uh, I don't know Susan Boyle. No? It was this. It was this. Uh, this lady coming on stage. Uh, if anyone knows, just tell us. So it was this lady coming on uh, on Britain's Got Talent, and she walks in. I should play it for you because it's just amazing. And uh, she walks in, uh, dressed like an old lady, uh, with the ha socks hanging, really dirty hair, just looking like this, and she goes like, "Hi," and ah, she's just yeah, yeah, yeah. very uh, smart and just I'm going. With you uh, now. I'm yeah, with you now. I, 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 I know who she is. Now. If you have a picture, pop it on that before, and then and then she starts singing, and it the contrast is amazing. So you have this this uh, general girl lady because she looks really old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so she just looks. Uh, yeah, you have some of them re looked after, but so you have her getting on stage, being just a a, a neighbor or a, a farmer or whatever you you want to say. And she opens her mouth and there comes a voice that nobody expected. And so imagine if she had come there. Yeah, so if you take the picture uh, where she has the open mouth here and then you take the picture next where she has beautiful hair and little red dress, right? So if she had come on with a, her dress and hairdo on stage, then the, the boss would not have been there because then it's it's been a, 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 a girl already ready, knowing she was good, with a nice smile, nice hairdo. They couldn't do anything. But here, I mean, if she, if she had changed the dress, it wouldn't work. If she had changed her hairstyle, it would not work because the whole boss was the bam. The whole surprise was there of, of her having a look of anybody you would meet and even you're just like, ugh. Is she going to sing? And then she opens her mouth and it's fantastic. So that's the kind of things they're looking for. They're looking for people like this. They're looking for surprises. They're looking for things that would create a scandal. Now, when I worked with X Factor, in X Factor, it's really the name, X Factor. Do you have this in the States? X Factor? Yeah. So there they look for the X Factor. They look for the what factor. So actually, when you're in there, they have casted 50% of total weirdos, of people painted, of people um, of people that people are not going to like, or maybe they're going to love, or they're going to like that they dared. People who sing really off-key, uh, people who are going to walk on their tongue, I don't know, but still singers, but singers who are just totally... Yeah, because uh -huh. they have casted all the weird people, and then they cast all the really, really good singers and 
da 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 that they can do things with. And on top of that, they are categorized into age groups and uh, and and singles and I don't remember. There's some other castings there, but the thing is, I ended up in a hotel with the last 200 people, and, and I was just like, wow, this is going to be so cool, and I saw the weirdest people I have ever seen, <laughs> and and I was just like, that that's where, I, I didn't know this, that's where I started realizing, I'm like, but he doesn't say, he just looks funny, and uh, and so eccentric, the more eccentric, the better, so we had, we really had the half of the people who were singers, and half people were funny, and so they casted the they casted all the ones that they were going to take out, but who were going to make buzz, and, and and that was just so unexpected, and that's why that TV show uh, works really well in the UK because they they like that enormous contrast of 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 people being really eccentric and funny and different and. And then you have the, the then the the clean singer is gonna look really clean next to someone uh, painted and so so that's also a way of creating that TV show right and uh, if we take if we talk about American Idol we also have uh, some castings that are done uh, with people with really really big and and horrible life stories because I can I see that I mean I've been watching quite a lot and I see that that really sells there too so. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what? Let's let's just say you know because everybody likes a good story and uh, and human beings like to see someone overcoming something, but there are also other stories, other narratives. You know, you don't have to go to this. It doesn't always have to be dark and tragic, right? No, no. You have oh lots of positive stories. We have the but there is some darkness somewhere i mean it, 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 we had this beautiful girl she was uh, she came up and sang fantastically and she was um, deaf you know amazing uh, so it's it's like survival stories people love this people love uh, you've been through something and you're there or you're really sad so therefore you sing or you work uh, for a humanitarian um, section and I mean the whole goal is I mean if 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 you take the Ellen show and you make them all sing then you have winners everywhere right because <laughs> I, I don't know if you, you you watch a lot this but this we have all these pop-ups of, of the Ellen show and and it's all the way the way we see it here is all people um, taking out of the public who does fantastic things for other people so if you're a, one of these people who does fantastic things for other people and you sing, there we go. We have it. We have the buzz, right? So, so it is all good stories. It just needs to be a story. It can be a love song. We had people who sang a song for the dead to thank you for paying the university. I mean, whatever. We just need to touch people. And in, I'm one of the perfect. I can be one of the perfect criers. You know, I cry when when it's a beautiful story i cry when it's a sad story i cry when when it's a loving story i cry i, I mean i cried at my son's communion <laughs> so we just need a story so and everyone has a good story it's just about letting it yeah. out there yeah that's so important i mean <laughs> you might think you don't have a story but you do you do you have stories and and uh there's a there's an i got we got a question in the chat um and and it's from uh, Earl Jeremy. If they're working the show in this way, do they offer emotional support when the talents crack under the pressure of the limelight? Ah, very good question. And and you're 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 touching my emotions there because as a coach now, uh, I can tell you that uh, I don't know in the states because I haven't been there working yet. I was very young with when I was singing in the states, but uh, I haven't been there since. But in Europe, uh, on X Factor shows, there are psychiatrists in the show. Wow. So one and yes, but you have to know that it's really really tough. So uh, X Factor is one of my worst experiences. Uh, I went very far, but the the whole uh, bad experiences is, is when you're in, then uh, you have a hotel room with a with a few girls because um, they're in your age group or whatever, and then every night one leaves. 
So when you come back from your casting or your show or your singing, because this all goes on in Paris, and then later on it goes on on the islands and blah. And and once you're on, then they, they, they just remove that person while you're not there from your room, and you get a better room. And the other person wants to say goodbye to you, but the other person is held out. They're not allowed to see you anymore. And it's not her who gets the psychiatric help. It's us for being in. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then you keep on moving on the next day, then you, and, and less and less, and all of a sudden, some people want to come and speak to you. So you get small letters under the doors that they have been running to say, hey, I'm out, sorry, hope you're okay. Then we had the mobile phone so we could actually write to each other. But before that, no. So, so the thing is, it, it's really, really tough. And it's really tough because they, they push you so much. I mean, just for queuing up to get the results, you're standing like 300 people. And then they start pushing you up. So you're getting less and less space. So you get more and more stress. So that when you walk on the stage, you know, they have the last 22 of each category. On the stage, you're standing there. You are sweating because you've been standing for one hour, being pushed together, pushed together, pushed together, waiting. Then they put you on the stage and you're waiting for the results. And they let you stand there literally 20 minutes with cameras on your face. So you have three cameramen going. And the other one's far. And you, I mean, I was one of those. I just did not want people on TV to see that I was worried. So I was just standing like this. No, no, I'm not worried at all. <laughs> I'm not worried at all. So I was doing that fake smile because that was like my deal. I just did not want people to, I didn't want to look like this. <laughs> I didn't want that face. So I just stood there with a smile and I had cramps up here. <laughs> and you stand there and then finally you get the result. And, and it's not like, yay. No, no. They, they say like, so you go front, you go back. You go front, you go back. And okay, you're all front. And you're just like, am I in? Am I not in? And then 10 more minutes there in front you like, and then bam you're in or bam you're not and once you're out then you walk out and it's another corridor and then you're just standing in the street and you're like where's our bags where's our stuff and then comes a guy just with all the bags and pumps it there and you're out oh, yeah. there's no yeah. no journalist no one talking to you you don't know how to get your plane ticket or your train uh, ticket to go home you have to walk back to the hotel where all the other days they came in buses picking you up, driving you to the hotel. You're walking there with your bags. You walk back to the hotel and then you go to the front of the door like, oh, no, you cannot come in. But I have a room here with all my stuff. No, your stuff is here and the rest you have on your back. And what about the tickets? Yeah, you got to wait. So you sit outside on your bags waiting for someone to come and give you tickets to get home. I mean, so X Factor is not the funny one. I would never send one there. Uh, maybe in the UK if they're nicer, but in the rest of Europe, it's it's well, really tragic. Let's just be honest. I mean, the entertainment entertainment business is pretty brutal. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. You have to have thick skin if you think you're going to make it, and that's why. That's <laughs> I just have to chuckle. I, it's when when I talk with colleagues um, that likewise have been in this business. Uh, getting, you know, making it in the business, working in the business for decades and surviving off their paychecks, then you understand, you understand a lot of things. It is a learning process, you know, but it, it's helped me, you know, in the beginning, you're just, you've got the dream, right? You've got the energy, you haven't, you don't have the scar tissue, you don't, you know, you haven't been put out in the desert and had to survive multiple times and find your way home. But that's it's the entertainment business is pretty tough but the more you know in advance the better you can navigate yeah right that's, that's, then then your feelings you're not going to be crushed because yeah of course imagine that imagine just what you described psychologically emotionally you know it's you you you're done you go out there's nobody and that's why entertainment business is yeah. so brutal when when they want something from you you're going to get treated they like the it. king and queen yeah. and everything's then... paid for everything's organized when they're done with you it's just me <laughs> see you later have have a nice yeah. life right and that's just part of the business so it yeah. seems super brutal yeah. but compare it to anything else you know you go in multiple job interviews for a very uh, wonderful a very high paying position at a big corporation or a law firm. You've been working for this for years. You've been studying for years. You go through that interview process and then you get there. Maybe you're one of the last two, you know, and they say, well, and then you, 
you get shown to the door. You know, they're also not going to get you a limousine and no. drive you home. You know, it's they it's, could, uh, especially they with could. Me. They should. They got the money. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but but I don't know if I answered totally the question. So, in in these uh, uh, in these X Factors and uh, some other TV show, yes, they do have. Uh, you can also, if you're uh, getting out, you can ask to see them. But they're mostly taking care of the ones who are in because yeah. that's the money, right? right. But uh, in the voice, no, they don't. And this is where I, when I when I say uh, loudly, have a vocal coach or a manager or. Uh, uh, a parent or but parents is a bit too close I would say but have a professional person accompany you because you're going to need help you're going to need to when you're out you're going to need to sit down and you're going to you're going to need to be allowed to say I'm sad because it's allowed you know it's yeah. human to say I'm sad I'm out you're allowed even to cry you're allowed to be mad you're allowed to say it's a cheat you know all of these emotions people forget and we as humans we want to look good so we just go like oh no it's totally fine that I didn't win and that I worked my ass off and that I canceled my job and that I got fired because I wanted to go to all these TV shows and it's fine I'm not disappointed at all so it's it's really important to 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 know that you're allowed to be sad and unhappy and yeah. that's that's where there are no uh, no uh, psychologists or coaches out there helping after. So um, that's one of the things that I'm going to suggest this year um, because it's also part of, uh, of of us as vocal coaches. We are also shaped or trained to be there on the emotional part. So I think it's very, very important that these TV shows actually have some. And I know there has been suicide cases uh, after all this exposure because once you're on the TV show, I tell you, you walk in the road and people stop you everywhere. I mean, you go from being nobody in the morning and to be Mr. Top in, in the afternoon. And depending on the country, depending on how many yeah. scoops and, 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 and people they have. So, so get ready for that too, you know? Yeah, and I, you know, if you've never experienced it, it's a little bit hard to get ready for it. But I agree. So let, <laughs> let's, let's be frank. You know, you know not... Not every professional vocal coach is also a, is, is a therapist. You know, you don't, talk don't about have necessarily meat. have that expectation, <laughs> but you do need a relationship of trust where you can talk to each other, where you can get some guidance, where you, you can confide in them and you know they have your best interest at heart. And someone that's also going to tell you, you know, the main benefit you're going to get out of this for your career is your publicity. You know, and we you need to be smart as as you're using that. So so you have realistic expectations. So you don't fall out. You know, it's going to be disappointing. I mean, Dita, can, you can relate to this. Like, how many times have is has in my career has it been down to for the new Disney show musical or the new <laughs> brand new musical here? And I've gone through the whole casting process. They love me, love me, love me. It's down to me and one other person, and I didn't get it. And bam. You know what? The real reality is until you are the person they call, then you don't have to audition. And that's a very, very short list. You know, until you're at that position, you're, you're going to be in that position a lot more than you are going to be in the position when you get the job. Of right. And it is. It's frustrating. You're like you get angry. You're like, Duff. That guy looks exactly like me and he's half as good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you have but he got better you. teeth. He's got, maybe he's got better teeth. Oh, so I wanted to share. That. So I'm going, I went, I told, I told Dita this. Sorry. But, but no, um, some of you don't know, I broke a crown right here. So this right here, right now is a temporary tooth. So the other day I'm in my car, I'm going to get a smoothie because, you know, smoothies are healthier than a Coke. <laughs> some, you know, get some antioxidant smoothie. All right. So I go in, I'll show you. And the guy uh, taking my order says, um, aren't you a, a famous vocal coach, right? And I'd taken my tooth out so I could drink, right? So I was like, so I'm going there to get the smoothie and say, aren't you that famous vocal coach? I've been thinking about getting lessons. I'm like, don't smile, don't smile. Uh, uh, uh. And I'm having this conversation <laughs> and my tooth is out. And I'm like, this is so humiliating. I'm being recognized in a public position. I look like this, right? So I just pop my tooth back in, all right? Yeah, and that's that's <laughs> life too. So and you give it Yeah, and I'm like, okay, yes, here I am. It's like why yes, that's me, right? <laughs> 
Anyway, you can we can have we need to have a lot of fun with things and stay positive. These casting shows have a lot of wonderful benefits, but we just need to remember they're 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 entertainment. That's what they're designed to be. They're designed to create ratings. They're designed to tell great stories. Then you need to bring your story and you need to to have somebody in your court, you know, to help you. Because what if, like Dita, Dita said, what if they say you're going to sing this song? It's not like, no, nah, I'm not going to sing that song. OK, well, you can choose between these two, but we really want you to do this song. And they're going to push it and push it and push it and push it. And you're going to end up singing most of the time what they want you to sing. Yep. And if you don't have a coach there that's going, OK, this is how you do this. You know, we're going to make, make you sound as great as possible, even though this is totally not in your range. It's not your style. <laughs> so we, if you're on your own, it's always more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's let's see. Let's just see. We've got some um, people in the live chat and in our Zoom meeting. You guys have any questions? If you have any questions, just pop it in the chat now and, and let's talk a little bit more open. And as we're doing that, um, I just let me think if there's some. Is there anything else you wanna wanna share, Dita? No, I I was just thinking like it, it's just important that that if people think that they go there for justice, then it's not the right place yeah. to go. But but I would go there definitely for exposure. Um, I would go to learn, and and I I think I'm gonna continue. Uh, although I'm I everyone is like you should be on the voice or you should be there. I'm just like nope. Uh, I'd go there one day to be a coach, but I'd, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, can I share more? I have more to share. Here we go. Yes, please. please. So, um, the people sitting in the judges' chairs, let's just be, be, be honest, they are singers, not vocal coaches, right? So, yeah. every time you guys out there go to a competition, let's not call it a casting, to a competition, you have to remember that whatever comment you get, it's just the opinion of that one person. It is not the truth. Be uh, I'm really happy to get the chance to say this because this has been sitting here for so long. So I have so many people who come back from a competition or from a The Voice or from another TV show. And they, and they are like, yes, but they said that I sing with my nose. Okay, so this person, this singer is going to go around and think and think he thinks with his nose <laughs> think sings with his nose and there we are destruction number one then he has another show and he goes there and they say like oh they say that I should um, uh, um, open more my mouth and uh, that I should choose uh, country songs let's say he's a crooner and he sings Elvis Presley right and and there pff, rock number two and this is where all the rocks come from so these things they're saying are their opinion. And the guy saying that he had to be a country singer was probably a country singer or someone who likes country. So he's not going to, maybe he doesn't like Elvis, huh? Who knows? So, so the thing is, you just got to be aware that all of these are opinion of people, not uh, the truth. So if me and Philip, we would make a, a, a TV show or, or any kind of competition right now, whatever we would say, would probably be based a little more on technique, uh, a little more on our experience, but it would still not be the truth. It would be the truth from a scientific point of view if really you wanted to know how high you lifted your back tongue or <laughs> how well you used your diaphragm or, I mean, we can be very boring vocal coaches too. <laughs> so if you wanted some scientific proof, we could give you that and then it would be the truth. But if you wanted an opinion, then it would just be, Philip and me, and I am pretty sure we would not have the same opinion. So with all you singers seeing this, when you go into these kind of shows, you have to imagine that you go into a clothing shop. So take the four judges in front of you and imagine what kind of jumper they would choose. Would they choose the same jumper? No. If you look at them, one is wearing a red one, one is really ooh, eccentric pink with, with the with palliettes, uh, one is wearing pearls and another one is in a very, very classic jumper. So if they're allowed to go in a clothing shop and choose different jumpers, and if you think you're allowed to go in and choose your own jumper, then they are allowed to have different opinions. So whatever they're going to say about you is just going to be a clothing jumper 
choice of opinion. So that that opinion is going to be based on their background or based on what they tell them to say here in the little ear thing they have, yeah. right? So please don't think it's the truth. Don't put it in. Take Write it down. Write all these things people say to you and all these things. Write it down and go see a vocal coach who's going to sit with you and check. Do you think you, you, you sing with the nose? Let's check. Nope. Oh, not singing with the nose. Le do you think that you should stand tall and wear a long jacket? Okay. Mm, no, that's not making you. No, nope, not good on you. Or oh, good. Oh, yeah, good. Long jacket. Let's try. You know, or country. Well, okay. What did they want with it? Does he like country? Or maybe does he have a thing? Or let's try some country. But but go get help. But don't sit with this in your head of all these opinions. And absolutely don't ask family and friends for their opinion. <laughs> Right? Yeah, it's it's good advice, you know, and I don't know, it's a little bit difficult, of course, because for years and generations, you know, you've gone to, um, to a vocal coach and another coach is basically to get their opinion, right? And that's because if you want, you want, you need some feedback, we all need feedback, but it's important to, that's, it's very good advice, the feedback you get if the as qualified as it can be when you separate just the technical aspect you know on, and then move on to genre or style then it is an opinion it's a, an opinion of the individual and i know dita i know um that she's also very careful with this uh, and and i am very careful with it as well i say the decision's got to be yours as the singer and the artist so most of what we do is is we're, we're trying to coach you and guide you, but in a way that you are challenged to develop your own opinion. Oh, yeah. The stronger that opinion gets, the more clear your identity becomes as a singer, as an artist. And at the end of the day, guess what these casting shows want? A clear identity. And yeah. guess what the business wants? A clear identity. And your clear identity is you and most people are just putting things on putting different clothing on putting yeah. different hats on different outfits on what and let's talk maybe with this can transition into choosing the right pieces for auditions and castings right it's if you have a, a, an identity that's who you are be comfortable with it make it your choice you know and then now let's let's take that and say um we've got a couple questions so i'll come back to these but let's say now you're going to a casting show, whether it's a, a TV casting, a theater casting, or another casting, you go to that casting show, here you come in, you've got your identity. Now, if I go to a casting show for a rock concert, a rock band or a rock opera, and I'm wearing this, just my outfit already put me in a different category than the genre. So know, know what you want, you know, who, who are you? What songs do you sing? If, if you're if the choice doesn't match what you're showing, you know, then you're already kind of out of balance. Does that make sense? What do you think, Dita? I think it would be the same as us girls dressing up for a date. <laughs> what do we want the date to be? How do you dress? <laughs> you know, it's a bit the same, right? It, it, it's just about, I mean, get ready for what you expect or, or make it happen. But if you want to make things happen, wear the right thing get the right attitudes um you know you just gotta leave that little space for someone to help you and and leave that space for the tv show especially if you are in these kind of tv shows leave that space for them to create furthermore yeah that's very important i think that's great i mean we come to uh, you 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 got to realize you're getting into the entertainment business and when you get into the entertainment business it's always good that you're not quite a finished product Right. Yeah. If you've got to be far enough along where someone can say, OK, I love this. I love this vibe. I love this energy. I love where it's going. But still, I want you need to be moldable and flexible yeah. to 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 work get fit, if get fit, yeah. fit in, you know. So um, let's see. I've got a couple questions here. One question uh, is coming from, let's see, from Jazz Sari. All right, and Jazz Sari is a jazz singer, and she oh. said, "Hi, Dita. I'm a jazz singer. I'm just not widely. I'm not widely accepted in my society, and it's affecting me 
mentally and vocally, I noticed I'm my performance level is kind of declining. What what are some steps I can take to to maintain my act? Come to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I think there's one thing you have to remember. Now it makes me a bit sad to read what it is, uh, what you what you what you're telling, because there is a place for everyone. Maybe you're just, I don't know your story, but maybe you're just thinking that there's only your community that you need to be accepted by. But what I want to say is, the world is huge, and maybe you're not going to be accepted where you are right now. But with all the internet and all the platforms in this, I mean, you can be liked in Russia. You can maybe have your audience in jazz in Copenhagen. Come here. Or you can have, I mean, there is a place for you. You just got to figure out where. And you're just going to, the, the only thing you can really do is to be 100% yourself. Be 100% your product. And then people will come and find you. And maybe just around you, not. It's very, very often that people around you are the wrong ones. And the communities or the groups you want to fit into are the ones who don't want you. That is my story. It's Philip's story. It's many people's story. But there is a chance in our days. And that is that the world is huge. And music, everyone consumes music. So get your stuff out on, on Spotify, on YouTube. I mean, I mean, we're there to help. You send it to us. We'll send it out on our platforms. You know, so, so if, if, if that's the question, then the world is yours. You just think bigger. And with Corona, uh, there is a good side. Everyone is behind their computers. So it's now you have to do it. Yeah, once, you're, right. once we're all released, then it's going to get harder because there are more out there. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. And uh, you are amazing, Dita. Thank you so much from, from Zoya. Uh, I agree. Dita is amazing. Oh, another question um, from Pamela. What are some things you debrief with yourself after a high intense performance or audition? What should one focus on to get better for the next round or the next one? Uh, so are we did so what does it say after a casting or after yeah, a performance any performance casting basically what what process do you go through for self reflection after these things what what should you focus on to improve for the next one and what should you let go i think i think my answer is going to be a bit funny because i know that in in the united states you have another way of of doing because I, I just I work with a dancer um, who came who, he, he worked in Las Vegas uh, on this show uh, I don't, what was it uh, Cirque du Soleil he worked there uh, and then he came back to uh, to be a, a dancer on one of my shows and after his show he came to me with with the and he said can I have my approval or my I don't know what it was called but but basically he wanted his feedback and his points yeah. something like this and That's I was just exactly. like. <laughs> And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> the show is over. It's cool. Great. You. And he was like, oh. And then he explained that you have this system of uh, feedback and, 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 and looking back. And, and even when you're on a show that you actually get uh, in Cirque du Soleil, that's what they do. They get a feedback every day. And if they have so many bad performances, then they're off for a week and they have to come back. And they get, get, get we don't work like that. I mean, and, and I especially, I'm one of these uh, rebel girls. So... I never look back. I never look back. I, I work with my God feeling. I work with, with my, my heart. I give everything I have. And I think the only thing that I can look back to if, if, if uh, sorry, is if I felt uncomfortable. Because my voice I know, maybe I can be uncomfortable because I didn't put enough time into learning the song. That is one of the things. Well, maybe I could feel uncomfortable because if I had to do a little monologue, uh, what do you call that, Philip, a monologue? If I had to do a little speech or a description of acting, then maybe I didn't know that well enough. Uh, maybe I, I, can, I can look back and say, oh, I, f I didn't feel nice in my clothes because I put on some weight. Or, um, so if the feeling inside of me and my heart is wrong, then I know it's wrong. And the only thing I can do better is, is to look at how I can feel better with myself. But my voice uh, is trained that way. 
and that is without being trained because I, I work like that. I, I, I sing every day. I, I had stage performance every day. I never had singing lessons. I, I, I never worked my voice. I, I, I just came very fast to a level where singing is easier than speaking. I came to a level where I learned my songs while driving to the gig because the client just called me and said, oh, I need you to sing this, 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 this. I was like, okay, up. In the radio, or in that days, it was a cassette player. Clang. The text on paper uh, over here while driving. <laughs> this is very bad manners I'm telling you about. That was the old days. <laughs> and and you would learn a song um, while getting to the gig. So no, I never look back. Uh, I never look back if I if if I if if it felt good. If it felt good, then I'm good. Uh, I would never go back and watch and say, oh, did my musicians? Uh, no. It's yeah. it's a feeling because singing is singing is a job. Singing is not about me. Singing is not about uh, how me Dida I feel on stage. Singing is about me just feeling good and delivering to you. Singing is about singing because I have to. Singing is about um, transferring things to you, making you feel better, making you. It's a bit like being a photo model. You just you you voila, you got the job, now you deliver. Right? So they can put clothes on you, they can put this. I mean, you don't cancel a gig. If you're on, you don't cancel. You, you go to the gig if you're sick, you run to the toilet between the songs, but you're on. So um so no, I, I will not go and look back. But I will go and look back if something went wrong. I will go and look back if I felt wrong. Because mm -hmm. that's a, if I start feeling something on stage, that means I'm not prepared. Or that me and the client, we didn't agree on what he really wanted. But this happens very rarely, but maybe because I'm lucky and I just say yes to everything. So I do it all the time. But I would definitely, the, the advice I can say is if it feels good, leave it there and go on. Mm. If it feels wrong, then have a little chat with yourself. Sit up. Don't ask the opinion of anyone. Ask your own yeah, heart. <laughs> I, I understand where you're coming from, and that it's true. If the, people say, "Don't ask the opinion," if you feel good about what you did, don't don't, don't ask your opinions. No. I mean, because everybody and even even if it went wrong, it. don't ask because you know it went wrong. You know, so it don't went wrong. hit yourself in the head. Yeah, you you need to learn who to ask. You know, and I've made this mistake a lot. But basically, as soon as you ask for an opinion, you're going to get answers, whether they're qualified or not, and those are again just opinions. So, yeah, I, I speak with my clients about this as well. They go through a lot of different auditions. And the criteria I learned for myself is very similar to what Dita says. If you've prepared well, your job in any casting or audition is to represent yourself in a way you feel good about how you represented yourself. If you feel you, like you went in and you gave a good representation of yourself, be satisfied that was the best you could do on that day and you felt great about it that's all you have to do and if you keep going and representing yourself well where you're feeling good about it guess what's going to happen it is a numbers game you just you are your own enough, business yeah you go to enough castings and you represent yourself well you will be getting hired and also i we've both been on the casting side and i can tell you there's been, I remember the people that came in and did a wonderful audition. And I remember trying very hard, many times, trying to give them a job. But I couldn't because they didn't fit in what that production needed. But I will always remember those people for the future. And they will always be in my yeah. mind. So the next time and, that and person be comes to, for the next one. Yeah. Next time they come across the <laughs> stage, I'm like, oh, I, I want... I can't wait to hear them sing again. So it's always about representing yourself well and knowing that when you do that, you leave a good impression. Whether yeah. that person can use you that day or in the future, it's your job is to just go and leave as many good impressions as possible. But let's say you're on the path of, I want to improve. I want to keep, keep pushing my level higher and higher. So what, what do you do? You know, what process do you go through? The first thing is that I always say, I think it's just positive and it's healthy. It's just, did I represent myself well? 
Great. And then you know, this moment I felt a little bit awkward. That that phrase wasn't my best. You know, um, how, do, how do I respond to these kinds of questions? Those are things that where you can identify yourself and say, okay, I can work on those things. I can prepare myself technically better. I can do that. Or, oh, I realized today, actually, I was I was just wearing the wrong thing. Sometimes it's that simple. You need to, when you go into castings, you need to put the image of you in that role in their mind, right? Yeah. That's really important. I mean, the, we, we give these casting directors so much credit for having, they're in the entertainment business. They should understand costumes and wigs and makeup possibilities. They don't. I'm yeah. telling you, they don't. I've walked into certain auditions. You know, Disney's famous for this, but I've walked into Disney auditions. 30 seconds later, I walked out because I, I walked in and I heard the casting director say, no, he's not the right type. Well, if a Disney casting director says <laughs> you're not the right type, you can do everything in that audition. They're not going to use you. Nope. It's so some things are just down to type and that you can't take personally. If they've got something else in mind, that's what they have in mind. But let's go through, just go through the process. If you want to continue pushing your ability level, then you go through that process, do some self-evaluation, but keep it positive. Don't beat yourself up. Just say, okay, I felt like this. I felt like I was dressed appropriately. I felt like I connected appropriately. I felt like I was clear in my in announcing myself, presenting my work. I felt like I represented my, myself to the best of my ability. Great. This, this phrase didn't work as well as I would have liked it to. Then you can write that down. That's something you can obviously work on on your technique. I didn't feel like I was connected emotionally as well as I wanted to. Okay, write that down. That's something you can work on. You know, I didn't feel like I communicated well with the accompanist. That's something you can work on. There's there's little things you can work on always. And and some of them some of them are skills, but I think the main thing you you want to always do is represent yourself as best as possible. The yeah. rest is really out of your hands. Like I tried to, to explain, I've wanted to cast great people so many times and I couldn't because they didn't fit the needs of that production, yeah. you know, and sometimes you're limited in your casting. You, you get to the casting as a director, a choreographer, and the producer says, um, you can cast these roles. These roles are already, I've already cast, <laughs> you know, you don't have a choice. So, so just just know that leaving a good impression goes a long way. You're just going to go around leaving good impressions and you will you will find people that really want to work with you. Yeah. I just think it's important that you sing enough that you sing enough that you don't come and I mean you should not you should get that far in singing that you do not need to reevaluate your singing because once your motor works it works. And, 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 and if you have worked enough, worked, worked for me does not need uh, sitting down and rehearsing or doing scales. It just, it just means that singing has to be part of your life and you have to just sing all the time. If you sing all the time, you will know where all the right positions are. You will be able to wake up and, I mean, I have people sometimes wanting a coaching in six o'clock in the morning because they want to go before and... My voice, <clears throat> you can have a little bit of this and that, but I am still able to perform 100% at six o'clock in the morning. And you have to be ready for that because you have all the radio shows here in Europe. You have to be there at four or five in the morning. So you have to be able. So it's not about, it's, I mean, if you're in there, then you just need to sing all the time, all the hits. If you're in the jazz, do all the jazz songs again. Sing, 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 but sing because you enjoy it. You know, because that should be the only thing that you should not doubt of. You can doubt of feeling awkward. You can doubt of people looking at you. I mean, I, I can give you one advice, but it's not about reevaluating. It's about how I can get over uh, being scared in a casting. Because I have realized that the worst thing for me is when I want to please. When I want to please, when I get in that mode where I want people to like me because I want the role, then I lose. And I lose not only the role or the, the, the casting, but I also lose my whole confidence in myself. And I have, I have it, I have it though, but I lose it totally there 
because I put myself in a victim role. In a role like, oh, I really want them to like me, then it doesn't work. So I have found my trigger, so it's about finding your own. My trigger is find a position in my mind where I help people. So I go there with the idea of me suggesting to help them find what they're looking for. And in that way, I'm in a delivering role. And this actually really works for me because my life is about helping people um, in all in all kinds of ways. Um, so if I feel that on stage I'm helping, that's why I'm, I'm good on stage when it's a party or uh, there's a public because I, I, I want to help people have a fantastic evening or I want to help people have a good wedding or I want uh, I want to help people having a fun party but when I'm in a casting I don't help anyone I have people looking at me judging me so that is just horrible so if I go in there with a mindset saying I go there to help you find the right roles <laughs> then it works much better just a little tip from the blonde <laughs> 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 okay. Ben. I look like Pinky with this light. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up now. But I want to um, just, of course, thank thank Dita for spending time with us and giving her our her giving us her insights onto onto how this works. Um, it's really. I think it's very, very beneficial. And these are questions that guests get asked all the time. And so many people want to want to be part of these casting shows. And I, I like to prepare them a little bit more, not to take away their dream or their energy or their desire to do this, but just to just to help them have a better experience You say, these are the steps you need to prepare for. This is and go through it. You know, you got the story as your story. That's really important. And then also, you know, what matches your story? Maybe it's better for you to dress down and sing great, you know, than, than yeah. dress great and sing great. Just another experience. I have a, another colleague. She's a phenomenal singer. And she went as an older singer to, to the casting, right? And she killed it. She was great. Guess what they put on TV of her? <laughs> just some random crazy high notes and they they made like you know made her look like she was crazy she, and that's I mean, she was she's an amazing singer been doing it for years but what they do they just cut out her her really high notes and high riffs and just put it on there and made it look like she was just weird you know like they they had the footage she signed the paper but yeah. they couldn't use her so they used that yeah. to make her look make her look silly and ridiculous a uh, very good singer so that can happen too but being real about the process is great and real about the advantages um i just want to say let you all know uh dita you want to share your social media tag in case anybody would like to follow <laughs> you? well with the pleasure so um what would it be on instagram it's just dita Dita Vogel Coach, actually, in one word. And uh, otherwise, uh, on all the other medias, you just look for Dida, D-I-D-A, Robert with two Bs, R-O-B-B-E-R-T. That's more my singing profile and craziness. So uh, welcome to join <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, so please, you know, this is how we help each other nowadays and connect, you know, just follow, follow and subscribe to Dita Robert and vocal, vocal coach Dita. Or is it Dita Vocal Coach? Did I just uh, what is it? Dita Vocal Coach, I think, yeah. Dita Vocal Coach. Let me see. And uh, reach out. So you find us both on Facebook. Make sure you subscribe to the Singing Revealed YouTube channel. Click the follow button to get notified about all the live streams we're doing. Many exciting things coming up. Also, we've got the Facebook page, Singing Revealed, Singing Revealed Facebook page. Feel free to join us there. Um, thank you all for your questions been a lot of fun just want to recap here and let you know that the the online course is coming out very very soon right now we are releasing one module out of four um, it's all focused on your airflow control connecting your breathing and your body and your voice that's so important when those three things happen that's singing transforms right there so we have a very special offer going on we're calling it the beta content, right? So just go to our website, 
singing revealed and um, put in you'll see the button there for the online course and also what i've got going right now when you go to that course you're going to get a pop-up window so i put on a free webinar where i teach about practice technique some of you may have been in that webinar before but this webinar i think is worth so much because one of the things that slows down your progress is not practicing the right way you if you learn this professional practice technique this is scientific learning techniques that have been really fine-tuned and developed over the last 20 years it works for everything but it really works for your singing so you'll get that free webinar today if you just go to to the site so thank you all i hope to see you next week and as we did talk um, today a little bit about the mental health of the singer and your mindset next week lynn hilton is going to be my guest on voice masters and she is an absolute expert in this area that's what she does most now she's also like dita amazing woman who's done so many things in her life and um she's quite quite spectacular uh, i hope you join us next week i really believe in lena's lynn's work and she will be able to help you improve your mindset and understand why that's so important. It's not that hard. You just need a little bit of direction. So thank you all for being here. We'll see you next week. And thank you so much, Dita. Let's give Dita a big round of applause here. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to add, add my virtual applause. <laughs> I love the hands. <laughs> yeah. But take care of all of you, and I hope to hear you sing, all of you, one day. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Tita. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>